Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. The channel's called Ratchet, my name's Andrew, and on this episode, we do some more stuff to that. Run the title. Welcome to the channel if you're new. If you're not, then thanks for tuning back in. For those that haven't been following this build, make sure you click up in the top right hand corner to take you through to all of the previous videos that I have released. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any future videos that I do release. Um, leave the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment. It's always good to uh, read what you guys have got to say um, about the project. You can follow me on Instagram. My name on there is RatchetGT40 and you will get, I must admit, more up-to-date photographic build log of what's going on so you can get a sneak peek of what's going to be coming up in some future videos. In this episode, I had thought I was going to start um, placing the spider back onto the chassis to try and get that aligned, but it soon turned out to be able to do that properly, I had to do a load of other things first. So let me get you up to speed on what's gone on. So the spider is back on the chassis just temporarily, unfortunately. Um, I just wanted to remind myself how it sits on the front portion of the chassis. The reason being is because I want to chop around this front somewhat. On the original cars, they only have a thin portion of bodywork that sort of runs around, kind of offset from the line of the windscreen. So what that means is the fact that this front portion of the chassis needs to be uh, panelled out. So before I go chopping around any bodywork, I need to be sure that the new aluminium panels that I create along the top of the chassis are in the correct location. So that means that this, this panel will be coming off. Well, it basically means all of the panelling on the front I'm going to end up removing. But um, before I jumped in uh, knee deep. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I was going at it in the right fashion. So now the spider can come back off and I can start cardboard templating the various panels that I need to um, sheet out underneath in preparation for then cutting all of this off. You just have to do what you need to do when you're working by yourself. Um, the plan is to get the windscreen out at some point, um, which will help save a lot of weight um, when I'm lifting on and off the spider, because I'm sure it's going to be uh, on and off quite a lot. So what you can now see, what I'm planning to do, is the panels that are then going to come round here, cloak along the top of the chassis, come down here so this will be a new panel so now I need to start getting some of this old stuff out of the way a few moments later so I've well you can basically see what I've done I've stripped out all of the paneling from the driver's side front quarter um, because I think I can do it better. I'll take you around to the passenger side to show you exactly how it stands or exactly how it stood and what I hope my plans will be. I hope you can make out from this shot, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven panels that make up this corner and I can't help think that with a little bit of thought I must be able to drastically reduce the, the amount of panels that need to go into this this area it's it's just the unnecessary joins and I'm I'm sure you will be able to see but this is 
pretty messy. So I can't wait to get this side stripped down and um, actually get cracking with the rebuild. As you can also see, I had a fairly decent session with the welder and grinder, basically filling in all of the holes on the top of the chassis. I will need to re-drill all of the holes on this lower portion. None of, none of the hole positions were savable that had been drilled already because they were just all just unevenly spaced and they looked an absolute mess. So on this portion, it was just easier to weld them all over so I can start again afresh. For those that follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen that I've stripped out the passenger side panelling. But those who don't, let me show you what's going on. So there we go. It's nice to get all of that old stuff stripped off and out of the way. You'll also see that I've been round and welded over all of the existing rivet holes. Basically with the panels of this complexity with the various bends, folds, creases, and goodness knows what else, I think it would have been very difficult to get the um, existing rivet holes lining up with the new panels that I do create. So as always, other works have been progressing in the background that I've not shown you yet, but it's now at a stage where I'm able to, and it's something that I'm really excited about. So here it is, the driver's side panelled out and it has been a lot of work but I must admit I'm really happy with how it's come together. Let me give you a little step by step tour on what's changed and how I've redesigned this whole area. So let's start with this corner piece with the old panelling. It was uh, two pieces. There was a side piece and, a, and an under portion with then a return lip along that line there. Basically, I, I didn't like any of that, to be honest. So what I did is now I've created this as one complete piece with a return lip or with a return edge down the front as it was but to get the a sealed edge along there what I did was actually create an internal return edge so it can still be riveted and sealed but you don't get the horrible line that you can see on the outside I still obviously need to make one more trim when I get the outer seal in its rough location and that will also have another hidden return lip returning inside of the chassis there. So that's gonna make this last trim just as clean as the rest. Coming along the top here, there was one, two pieces before. Now this is one complete piece that runs along there and then through um, to the inside of the car. So I've then gone from three pieces to two Along the bottom here, again, that was another couple of pieces which I've managed to completely design out to one. So that is one complete piece. So now coming forwards onto an area that was never panelled out at all, you will see here there's this top piece. So that's all one complete piece. And then there's this smaller bottom triangle. And then also a panel that I've made up is a cloak around the steering 
rack. Um, that piece will be removable and it is removable. So all of the other pieces will be riveted in place. Apart from that piece, which will, I'll just use um, bolts and riv nuts. So should I ever need to get access to the steering column, to the uh, mounts or bushes, I can still do that and not have to worry about um, destroying any of the other work. I'm sure you can imagine that this was just a real evolution as I sort of went along. So much thought went into the design, the crease positions, the fold lines, how everything intersects and sits together. So there is there is more to how these panels meet than, than just meets the eye. So let me explain what actually um, I've done. I wanted to add in some detail that very possibly would never ever be noticed by anyone else other than me, or if I was to ever point it out. The first one is where I have um, two panels butt jointed, I've added the same double line of rivets that I used on the rear panels. This same detail will also be used when, I'm, when I make the top panel and I split that down the centre. That will have the same double row of rivets running front to back. So that's, that's something that will sort of tie everything together. Instead of having a standard lap joint where two panels meet, I've put a bead rolled edge in this bottom one. So when the two panels come together, this is actually flush. And that's been done to all of the other vertical joints as well. So I'm hoping it's just gonna to come together and look like a really considered, well thought out piece of design. So that's basically the driver's side to a, a pretty decent stage. Now, annoyingly with a car having a left and a right side, I now need to do all of this work to the other side. And if I'm honest, I don't really enjoy doing things twice. All of the fun for me is in the initial thought process the initial problem solving. So once I've done something to a stage that I'm happy with, I don't really like doing it again. I want to get onto the next new thing and face the next challenge and come up with the next um, solution. So, but I don't really have a choice. What I will do now is um, crack on with the passenger side. It's just lots of Cutting, folding, trimming, sanding, bending, drilling, the usual um, routine. And I'll check back in with you um, when I've got some good progress made to the other side. So a few days work, I've now got the passenger side panelled out. What I've done is I've actually redesigned uh, this cover panel over the steering rack, I've extended that edge uh, 20 mil or so, so it runs into the angled panel. And it basically just designs out another meeting junction, another closing line. So it sort of simplifies the panelling layout even more. It, as you'd expect, it came together easier than the driver's side. All of the thought about the hole positioning, had already been done so I could transfer that over nice and quick. In order to get more accurate pieces, I actually took a second lot of templates off of the as-built driver's side pieces and then used those to make the passenger side out of. So again, it just reduced the amount of um, final trimming and cutting. For those out there that really know their Tornado GT40 kits, will know that in this area, the brake servo or one of the brake servos projects out past the line of the chassis, which I must admit I didn't want. So I've actually removed that because what I'm planning to do is swap over to a pedal box. So I'll be junking the twin servos, junking the 
electric vacuum and either looking to modify the existing pedal box, increasing the pedal length to give me the correct what six to one ratio, or in fact swapping it out entirely to a completely new pedal box. Leave me a comment below if you've got any first-hand recommendations of any aftermarket pedal boxes. I prefer top hung to floor mount, um, or if in fact anyone has modified a Tornado pedal box to give that correct ratio, I'd be really interested to hear from you on that one. I'm generally looking forward to getting stuck into this front end because at the moment it's a mess. Um, I'm considering doing away with the fire extinguisher because I need to deepen the nostrils of the front nose panel because I've panelled out the front of the chassis. Talking of panelling the front, I'm thinking about doing the inside face of the chassis now so none of it would be visible. Um, I think that would, again, be a, a really nice sort of uh, nice touch. So that basically takes care of yet another episode. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Leave a comment. As mentioned, you can follow me on Instagram, RatchetGT40, if you'd like to keep up to date with more current photographic progress. Coming up on the next episode, I think, I won't commit, but I think I'll be almost in a position to finally get this spider back onto the chassis and start looking at getting it located squarely and uh, where it should be. So, well, as always, no idea what's in store, but I will find out when I get there. So up until that point, I will catch you next time.